Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Vertical Drop Heroes HD. Very minimalistic menu screen, you can't actually hear any music, I'm not entirely sure why that's a thing. Not that much to see, you can see your controls and you can see a couple of options here. Notably, you probably want to keep auto attack on because the game is better at sensing when you'll hit an enemy with an attack than you are. It's very odd, but yeah, unless you're actively going for like a pacifist run, which we'll get into shortly, you should probably keep that on pretty much all the time. So, if we hit play, we'll get dropped into the game. There's basically no story. It's literally just people who make it, um, people trying to make it down to the bottom of a dungeon, more or less. And we have the ability to pick between three different heroes. It's a lot like Rogue Legacy in that sense, and they all have different abilities. I think I will go with the one with Tough and Finesse, just for the purpose of having Block on the Buckler, because the Buckler is a very awesome thing to have indeed. So here we are in the Temple of Knowledge, as they call it. This is your hub. This is where you can come to. Uh, teleport down to a lower level to start off with. You can buy upgrades, so I could buy a weapon attack upgrade for 125 coins there. Or I could come down here and get my Peace Orbs upgraded. Or I can come up here and get my maximum health upgraded, if I can make the bloody jumps. There we go. I will always get a health upgrade if I can, because health upgrades in this game are very useful indeed. You can also walk over these people to see what your abilities do, but I know what my abilities do. And you can also come down here to see what all your unlocks are, but the majority of them... I don't even know why they do it in this weird way, where they're like spread across like 10 different tablets, it's a little odd. But you also have some extra unlocks you can get, like beat three levels on pacifist mode, uh, get 150 kills in one level, which I did, but I haven't actually managed to see that weapon yet. Not one level, one game. And yeah, it's pretty basic stuff, nothing too out of the ordinary. So let's just go hop straight into the game. There's not that much else to see. And yeah, there's red game, uh, there's new game plus style stuff going on. Oh, by the way, just before I forget, I have about an hour of in-game time and I've got 20% of the unlocks. So that's, that's pretty basic. That's pretty good. That's good enough for me to tell you what I think about it. So away we go. This is Vertical Drop Heroes. It's a kind of a minimalistic combination, combination between Rogue Legacy and Spelunker or Spelunky. I mean, Spelunker and Spelunky, same kind of thing. So the idea is, you start from the top of the stage and you have to work your way down. At the bottom of the stage there is a boss. Of course on the way down there are enemies to kill. I'm not even pressing a bundle attack right now, this is the auto attack. There are a couple of other things that you need to get into, like there's um... There are special kinds of enemies going on right here. Bloody demonic rogue. But thankfully if I take him out I should get a fair bit of experience from it. Yep, I leveled up, I got a fair few keys. That's actually pretty good. And I've got a fair bit of money too. When you level up, you gain more damage, you get more health, obviously. The obvious stuff. Walk in front of those little flags there, they get alerted to your presence. The statues will tell you everything. Well, not everything, they'll tell you hints and stuff about what you need to know, but most of it's pretty self-explanatory. If you don't figure it out right away, it's usually pretty obvious. These shrines can do anything from be helpful to uh, like do things like spawn monsters, but give you um, spawn monsters, but give you bonuses for having those monsters be spawned. Combat in this game is very simple. You literally just with the auto attack on, you just walk up to the enemy and just you'll hit them automatically when you're in range, and that's usually a good idea to leave on just purely because of the idea that um, just purely because of the idea that. Your attack range is kind of weird, it's surprisingly hard to figure out. So what you want to do, is you want to figure out, um, you want to use the auto attack, because it's much easier just to leave it on and figure out what your attack range is from there. So it does make the, ga the gameplay and the combat rather simple, although it does have a couple, there is an advantage or two to not actually going around attacking everything you see. And we'll get onto that into the next. We'll get on that in the next level. What do you need? You want the three roses, which I have, and these guys unfortunately don't come with you to the next stage, so I'm just going to leave them behind. But yeah, those little boxes there, those blue ones with the up arrows, they will take you back up to the top of the stage. So if there's a if there's a stage quest that you want to do, you can just go through and 
You can go through, go back up, and then go back through again, find everything you need to know. There's a lot of grey statues on this stage. I don't usually see this many on this stage. The stages are, of course, procedurally generated, as are the enemy placements, the shrine placements, you name it. It's probably placed there randomly. The Guardians are not one, but two. Great, so I have to fight two bosses this level. But anyway, there are a couple of other things that the game's got going for it. It does have a pacifist mode, which um, you saw very briefly before I killed that guy. The pacifist mode means you can't kill enemy enemies, but if you do manage to uh, not kill any enemies, you will have these peace orbs that are lying around on the stage, and they'll give you XP and gold for picking them up. Very useful indeed. Hello. Uh, he's missing two of his royal puppies. I'm pretty sure I might have missed one on the way down. I didn't see it, but I wasn't paying too close attention. That's a lot. That's a l very little gold for more max HP. The shrines do get more expenses as we go on. But yeah, you kill an enemy and the peace orbs and stuff all disappear. So you can go through the entire game basically being a pacifist. You can also use things like environmental traps in order to do damage to enemies and kill them without breaking your pacifist conduct. So it's a lot like, um, it does remind me of something like NetHack, where there's like a hundred different kinds of, um, conducts you can do. There's the two guardians. This is actually a fairly simple stage. Uh, what am I going to do? All right, I'll drop down in the middle of them and do a couple of mega jumps so that, uh, mega jumps do thankfully do a ton of extra damage. I am kind of out of abilities now, but thankfully that Shrine there will let me recharge my abilities, and I'll just head straight to the next stage with nine freaking keys. Okay, so it's telling me that there's a um, a giant grub as the boss for this one. All right, let's drop down here. This will cost 115 coins to unlock. I might as well do that. I'll just drop down here. Grab as many peace orbs as I can before I really need to start killing things. A shrine of Flight. That's not very useful. I do want to get this guy out, though, because he... Uh, these allies are anything between useless to very useful indeed. Like, the one I just freed was a... I don't know what, what exactly he's called, but he's basically a berserker. He teleports all over the place and just kills everything that he sees. It's fantastic. Get him around a boss fight and the boss fight will be over in seconds. It's great. There are some that are useless, though, like the wizard. He'll give you shields. He'll help you... They'll take less damage. It'll mean you'll take less damage, but he doesn't last very long. Not at all. So the gameplay itself is really very simple. You find merchants and stuff that you uh, buy the extra abilities from on the way down. Notably, there hasn't been that many this time, which is kind of strange, but oh well. With the combat being as simple as it is, and it's basically being recommended to just sit in place and just swing away until... until whatever you're fighting off dies, it makes the game relatively... relatively... what's the word I'm looking for? Shallow? It's not too bad in the grand scheme of things, not really. It's just, um... yeah, surprisingly... surprisingly shallow. I mean, if you're going in expecting the depth of a game like Rogue Legacy or... Spelunky or anything like that. You're going to be kind of disappointed. It isn't that hard of a game. But it's not that bad. It's got a fair amount of things to unlock. It, the, the levels are laid out in a way that you do kind of have to plan your way down. You do have to decide whether or not you want to go and do a mission. Whether or not you want to take out enemies in order to... um, What's the word I'm looking for? In order to just, you know, get the bonuses... Not too hard to figure out how you want to do things. I'm going to kind of get screwed here. Just fire off as many arrows as possible. Thankfully, they drop a ton of, um... They drop a ton of charges for... Whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Tons of experience, too. And every time you level up, you gain... You get your health back, and it's the same thing with going to the next level. They're actually doing pretty well right now. Full health on level 4 with level 11 and tons of keys. So where we go, what's the plan here? Oh, there's not actually much going on here. Oh, hey, a merchant. So you can come down here and I have bought sandworms, which is an ability. So 
all my new characters will get that as an ability. So as I was saying, the gameplay is really quite simple, and some of you might be disappointed by that, but it's a nice little time waster, and since there is actually some... There is actually some strategy in how you go about things, like how you decide to proceed down the level is a very big thing, and the game does... The game, the game does keep things interesting by introducing new kinds of enemies as you go down. The game is a... The game is a fair bit harder than it looks. There is a lot of emphasis on projectile avoidance. I'm lucky enough to have a character with block right now, so I can just stand there and... Well, not so much, um, negate all the damage, but I block an absolute ton of it, which is fantastic. Grab that key. Set off the alarm, but I'm gonna have to go through here, so I have to take the damage, unfortunately. Get myself some free XP, because why not? Drop on down. Bloody dark snipers. Knock him off the edge. Oh, hey, we got a, we got a guy here. What does he do? There's a song's a powerful rock grub. Oh. So I was supposed to kill that thing, was I? Oh well. Probably should have taken that shrine of health. With the heroes being random and all that, it does modify the way you have to go down and play the game, which is you know, something that you have to do with roguelikes, but it does it, it does it pretty well. You do have to be pretty careful of how you decide to handle things. I've got an absolute ton of keys right now, that's kind of ridiculous. The game has 10 levels and it will take you roughly an hour to finish, maybe? I mean, I got to floor 8 and I was, uh, I was at like 30 minutes in, so yeah, now it sounds about right. Damn it. I would have liked it. Oh, wait. I have a mega jump. There we go. Hello, you. And free treasure for me. This guy fires bolts straight down, so he just destroys everything on the way down, which is a nice way to just very quickly head downwards. Just by... Oh, that's unfortunate. I need more coins. I wonder if that chest over there will have the coins I need. Ooh. This is not a pleasant way to get coins. There's so many bloody enemies. Alright, well I have the coins I need, but I have to get back up the top, unless I want to see what that merchant has for me. Hey, I leveled up. Nice. Uh, immune to damage from burning blocks. Not a fantastic trade, honestly, but I'll take it. It's a neat little time waster, really. It um it doesn't do that much in the way of complexity or depth or or even like presentation. I mean the game's 44 meg and it kind of shows. There's very little music and the sprites and sound effects are repeated a fair bit as you start to go down, but at the same time, it's not really that bad. The game does look nice, don't get me wrong. It's just uh it's just, what's the word I'm looking for? Not that, uh... I don't really have a word for the feeling I have for this, but... It's an interesting graphic style, don't get me wrong. It's just, um... Not particularly great or awesome or anything like that. But it does the job alright. You can still see what you're doing for the most part. Oh, hi. He's, he's the boss. So let's take him out. And try to avoid being taken out by everything else at the same time, but looks like that may not happen. Just mega jump a few times, do a bit of extra damage. There we go, got all my health back, just take him out for the spare experience. Free key. I'm always up for a free key. I could go back up the top and get the um get that thing going on there, but I don't think I need to. Down we go. New power, shadow. Turns your hero into a shadow. Okay. So the game just continues on like this. The gameplay doesn't really change as you go down. And as far as I can tell, there aren't any real secrets along the lines of um, most major roguelikes would have. You know, no secret rooms like the Binding of Isaac or anything along those lines. But it really isn't a bad game. It's just relatively shallow. So, you know... Something you can play for like 10 minutes on your lunch break or whatever. Not terrible by any means. 
And they're charging very little for it too, which I definitely approve of. They're going to be charging $6.99 for this in euros and dollars. So, for a game like this, I really don't have a problem with that kind of price. It's a pretty fair price for something so simple. And I don't mind it. I might pick it up again just as a way to pass the time later on. Looks like I've got two chests here and I have to pick which one I... Oh, no, I don't have to pick which one I want because I was just able to destroy that. But there we go. The game's perfectly fine. It is pretty fun. I mean, it's not very interesting in the combat. And it's very just, like, simplistic in general in terms of its mechanics. And I imagine that someone who's half decent at it will be able to figure it out pretty damn quickly and, you know, finish it pretty quickly. But for a price of, like, $6.99, I don't got a problem with it. It's fun enough. It does its job. It kept me entertained for the hour that I played of it, so... I can't really think of anything particularly wrong with it that isn't about its lack of depth. So, I... Yeah, I really don't have a problem with it in the slightest if you're looking for something simple. I probably won't go to the left. Save the guy and get the, get some loot. Get a spare key for me trouble. Save this guy too. Treasure chest down there. Thanks for blowing the way open so I can get down to this without having a problem. And now I have to fight this guy basically all by myself. Not great. I'll just stay here and... Oh, oh great. Just fire as many arrows as I can. If I kill it, I should get... Well, I didn't get a level up, but thankfully I should get all my health back on the way to the next level. So that should work out just fine for me. If I can get past this guy. There we go. Bye, guys. Cathedral of Dust. Okay. This is a level I got down to previously, and I'm actually doing this pretty quick. This is a surprisingly fast run. There we go. That's a dick of a chest right there, and that's a dick of a merchant. Alright, well, we do have one here. Max damage 50%, but HP starts 25% lower. That's a pretty good trade, actually. Notably, if you get a really good trait to start off with, it'll stick around on pretty much every hero you have for your first couple of games. So I got, um, I got a trait that let me, what's the word I'm looking for? It let me unlock every treasure chest I came across without actually, um, without actually having to use a golden key for it, which is pretty damn great. And there was like no downsides to it, which is even better. So, yeah. If you get a good trait like that just right off the bat, you'll be able to, um... You'll be able to really make use of it across your first few games. Oh, that's unfortunate. I died. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um... As, as I said before, it's very simple. It's, um... It doesn't really break the bank on innovation. It is basically just kind of a small, small time combination of, um... It's a small combination of what's it called? Uh, uh, Spelunky and Rogue Legacy, but... I mean, it does enough, and it's cheap enough to make it interesting, and while I might not outright recommend it due to its lack of depth at the same time, it's really not that bad a game, and I mean, if you're looking just for something simple that you can play for 5 to 10 minutes at a time, this'll probably do you just fine. So, you know, recommended with ca caveats. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.